Hi, my name is Timothy Trespass. I'm a targeted individual. Uh, for those of you who are targeted, uh, you know what that means. For those of you who don't, a uh, targeted individual is somebody who's been selected uh, for use as a subject in secret, non-consensual human experimentation. Uh, the experimentation that has been done with myself and my partner has involved uh, mind control, remote neural connection, uh, microwave hearing, covert drugging with hallucinogens and hypnotic drugs, uh, hypnotic commands, uh, gang stalking, um, manipulation, of uh, genetic manipulation, uh, uh, infestation and uh, with possibly bio uh, organic nanoscale microchips embedding. Um, we were exposed to all kinds of toxins, chemtrails, Morgellons disease, um, mist being sprayed in the room, all kinds of insects on us, in us, around us. Uh, microwave uh, mind control, basically. But uh, the reason I'm making this video is I want to talk a little bit about microwave hearing what I know about microwave hearing. Now there's quite a few patents for microwave hearing. Um, they begin in the 1970s, I believe. Basically the theory is this, that using uh, very small electro electromagnetic waves, microwaves, at a particular frequency, um, because they cause heating, uh, thermal heating, um, before ionization, I guess, thermal heating of the particular parts of the ear, the eardrum, the, the uh, hammer. Um, so basically it's based, one of the, the patents is designed, is based on that, that using microwaves, modulated, uh, if unmodulated, if you sent a pulse of microwaves at the right frequency that would actually interface with the ear, it would go click as it heats up and goes, expands and goes boom and touches the eardrum. That's the theory. So modulating these clicks uh, faster and faster would make a voice. So the theory is you talk into the machine and you beam it at somebody's head and you tune in the right frequency and you find the resonant frequency of whatever that thing that you're modulating in the ear is and uh, the machine would transmit the modulated microwaves as a series of uh, very fast clicks, which heat up the eardrum and make it go blah blah blah, blah uh, thus producing hearing in your head that other people couldn't hear. Okay? That's one form of microwave hearing. Um, there's also uh, some new technology that involves highly directed waves of sound. Uh, basically, highly focused. Excuse me. Just having a cigarette here. Uh, highly focused waves of sound, and they've proven that they can beam these waves of sound directly at an individual, so that only the person who's in the beam of sound, this narrow beam of sound, will hear the sound, and other people around them, if they're not in the narrow beam of sound, wouldn't hear it, okay? That's uh, acoustic stealth sound targeting, I guess you could call it. Now, the other type of um, microwave hearing or uh, voice to skull technology, I guess, if, if you're using microwaves to resonate, you know, to heat and, or even to resonate, you know, because that little thermal expansion every time the little tiny wave hits the, the cells and excites the water and the expansion and it goes down, you know, maybe it's possible to uh, beam this microwave thing at your head and focus it into the, to the resonant frequency of your skull and, you know, that's possible too. Um, the other one that I find rather interesting I guess can be considered uh, synthetic telepathy. Synthetic telepathy or what I would like to call uh, electronic te telepathy or uh, you know technological telepathy. Now what that would involve 
would be, again, microwaves, because they're very, very small. Um, beaming the appropriate, uh, it's a little complex, but uh, how would you do it? I guess you'd want to lock into like the frequency of the particular person somehow, either by using really high terahertz or, or higher nano size scale microwaves. Uh, to either resonate the frequency of the DNA or possibly resonate the frequency of the, the water in the cells or some combination thereof. Uh, or maybe you'd want to implant the person with some sort of reflective uh, radar or microwave reflective thing or even some sort of radio frequency identification tag that would, would say, yes, we're beaming it at number one or this is number two, number three. Uh, some way to identify who and what you're beaming this thing at. Perhaps it's based on, um, you know, pico and nano gauss pulses, electromagnetic pulses that are emanated from the brain as we think, or some combination thereof. Maybe it's a EKG heartbeat, which is actually the most powerful uh, of the electromagnetic emanations from the body. It can be measured supposedly 12 feet or 12 meters, I'm not sure of my figures, but far enough. Uh, brain waves are a little less powerful, but they can be measured outside of the body also. And using special tricks to maximize signal-to-noise, I'm sure there's ways to get an almost infinite signal-to-noise ratio. Um, I'm losing my train of thought here. Anyway, synthetic telepathy, I imagine, would involve uh, some sort of neural lock, remote neural connection. Uh, connection between a supercomputer uh, as the interface, the microwave transceiver, it would be sending microwaves and it would also be receiving a reflected emanations. Uh, that's how RFID works. Basically, there's a little tag, you send radio frequency, add it, the energy from the radio frequency activates it and it says whatever it's meant to say. It sends back a code. Um, and uh, there's acid, active and passive tags. Passive tags don't have energy in them, so they react only for the energy of the, the reader. And the active tags have source of energy, and they send out beeps, little, like, Hi, I'm here, a little tracking beep all the time. Um, if if uh, the supercomputer and the microwave, the supercomputer have, would have to break the neural code. So basically it would have to be, uh, you know, 50 years of ongoing worldwide intense studies where they're showing you pictures and, and recording your brainwaves or making you say words or read words or think words and, and recording your brainwaves and do motions and recording your brainwaves and basically recording your brainwaves and matching it all up. And eventually the supercomputer is going to find all the patterns, line it all up, Artificial intelligence is going to help do this. Uh, you know, algorithms and artificial intelligence is going to look for the patterns and it's going to match it. Pattern matching. This is what computers are very good at. Computers are also faster at processing information than the human brain is. The human brain has this neural network. It allows it to look at things in different ways and connect things in ways that that computer algorithms have to be written to do. The brain sort of writes its own algorithms and learns as it goes, um, but the computer is much faster than the brain. And if you had remote neural monitoring where you were able to monitor the brain waves and match it against these algorithmic patterns that you know that, you know, if the brain is giving off this information and the person is looking at a picture of a cat and is holding a glass of milk, you know, I mean, we know that there's technology that they've been able to hook a cat into a machine and see what the cat sees from its brain. And this is the kind of science that they tell you about. So the kind of science that they don't tell you about has probably got us wired down cold. Um, anyway, once you have this pattern broken of the brain, the brain code, uh, the holy grail of mind control, and I believe they broke that pattern a long time ago, and are, are still busy breaking it, adding new bits to the puzzle all the time. Um, that's why there's so many targeted individuals, possibly because they're under remote neural connection and you know mind control testing and updating of the system with new information all the time, new brain types, brain mapping, neural networks, um, and nanotechnology. This all seems to be part of this puzzle of global mind control. Anyway, once you have the brain code and you have the microwave transceiver, you know, 
microwaves, uh, they travel a certain depth, and you know all this would have to be gauged the power level and and overall functioning. But basically, they found through studies what I can read in the medical literature that they can pretty much stimulate any part of the brain electromagnetically and get it to do stuff. And um, if you had the code and you had the the proper uh, waveform modulations, you know, combining uh, higher frequencies to make lower beat frequencies, because the brain frequencies actually seem to operate in these lower uh, wave, lower uh, range of the um, scale down, like one hertz to about 30 or 50 hertz, which is a fairly low frequency, um, but uh, those are the general patterns of the brain, but if you're shooting precise pulsed microwave uh, patterns at it, we know that brains entrain information. If you take a, a encephalographic reading, a neural recording of the energy that's being put out the brain waves somebody has while they're, say, depressed, and uh, then you record that, and then you play it back with the transmitter and inducer induction, you know, using magnetic induction or microwave pulsing or, or however you're doing it to influence the brain with that same pattern. We found that the brain will entrain or lock on to whatever patterns are, are um, around it that are more powerful, say, you know, uh, it's possible that if you're really, really happy and you have very powerful brainwaves, you may be able to override the depressing brainwaves of somebody else, but uh, we do know that entrainment works, that uh, people's brainwaves will begin to match patterns of induced brainwaves, so, you know, when you add all this together and you, you multiply it by 10,000 super science-wise, um, you have to imagine that a lot of the stuff you see in the movies is true um, because they hide the biggest, boldest lies right next to the truth, you know, so you can't really know. Anyway, that's a different subject. Um, microwave hearing or remote neural connectivity, uh, however it's being done, mind control, exists now today it is real and I'm here to tell you that it is uh, this should be one of the biggest stories you know since sliced bread but since this is the top secret uh, holy grail of the global elite who have been enslaving the human population for a long time and since they own the press and everything else I don't think it's gonna be front page news folks um, you know, I'm watching myself deteriorate. I'm under constant, uh, constant attack. I have remote neural connectivity. I have a, a high frequency ringing in my ears, about 10 kilohertz, which tells me that yes, I'm connected to the control room. And uh, not only are they monitoring my brain waves, what I see, what I say, what I think and hear, and my inner dialogue, the uh, sub-vocalized speech patterns, um, they also influence it. So I have many panic attacks and I have these strange inner feelings and I get these feelings of like having pencils poked through my head and through my eyes and these headaches that just come and go, horrible nausea and vomiting for days and days and days and uh, it's terribly unpleasant. It's almost like uh, the evoked potentials, the, you know, when you sit there and you think about something and you begin to get motivated and you say, yes, I'm going to get up and do X, Y, Z, and they're recording that brainwave and they take it and play it back to you out of phase, you know, uh, 180 degrees so that they cancel each other out. I feel that way a lot. I feel like somebody pushed a button and hollowed me out and I stand there for a moment going, oh God, what happened? Oh God, what happened? and uh, it's terribly unpleasant. Uh, what I call this technology is coercive technology. This is the technology of the 21st century that the military industrial complex, the global elite, the power structure, the people who are afraid of the masses finding out that they're actually being enslaved, uh, this is their holy grail and um, 
I don't know, I lost track of my thinking. There's a like a zero out button too, this way to in, in, interrupt thoughts. Um, there's ways to make you feel as though you're, you're competent and conscious and making sense, but you're actually not. Uh, you realize later that you couldn't read the street signs and you, you couldn't read, you know, it, it's disruptive technology. Basically, the military said, you know, we need a solution that's somewhere in between uh, killing people and talking to them, you know. Uh, talking to them doesn't always work. We're doing our best with the subliminal mind control programming through television. And so uh, they're developing coercive technology. And there's plenty of examples of it. Um, in fact, I was watching a video of, of the, the one of the Iraq wars when uh, the U.S. sort of came over the, the... There were all these soldiers, Iraqi soldiers, in a deep... In, underground like in a bunker you know and it was impenetrable and and for some reason the united states came over and 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 all of a sudden all the soldiers came out and threw their weapons down and threw up their hands and 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 they asked them later why did they do such a thing and they were they replied because allah told them to come out and surrender and so they did uh which sounds to me like coercive technology you know, crowd control, mind control. Uh, if you're able to talk into the mind of a group of people, like a broadcast mechanism, um, and these people don't realize that this technology exists, they don't have never experienced this technology, um, they're going to think it's magic or divinity or, you know, I mean, uh, basically all sophisticated thoroughly advanced technology in the eyes of, of society that doesn't have this advanced technology looks like magic, or, or, you know? So, um, that's one of the reasons I, I make these videos and I undergo the torment and torture uh, uh, because they don't seem to like me making these videos, or maybe they do, I don't know. Um, I'm not dead yet. Um, I'm aging rapidly, deteriorating. I mean, I was, I looked, uh, you know, 20 years younger, about three years ago, uh, before they started the hardcore phase with the covert drugging and the hardcore microwaves. I mean, you know, the skin on my head has changed color. Of course, my hair's falling out. And, uh, you know, here I have like these burns. They used to burn us with, uh, some kind of microwave weapon or particle beam weapon or something. And when we were in the hotel, we would get these zaps on our body. Bzz, bzz, bzz. It felt like, you know, shocks. Um, and sometimes we would sleep and we'd wake up with these big burns on our faces. And, and, you know, other times they would come in in the middle of the night and, like, dump bugs on us and wake up with burning, you know, the, it was actually the most painful thing I've ever experienced was this burning of my chest. I didn't know what it was for days. I was screaming. I was delirious. I was... It was horrible. I didn't know what it was. You know, the skin eventually turned all leathery and, you know, but putting water on it hurt more. Putting cream on it hurt more. It was almost as if there was thousands of little bugs dug into my skin, living in there, going, no, if you put stuff on us, we're gonna wiggle and hurt you. And just was really a horrible experience. Um, you know, these are the kind of things we we underwent. A high frequency ringing in my ears, about 10 kilohertz, which tells me that yes, I'm connected to the control room, and uh, not only are they monitoring my brain waves, what I see, what I say, what I think and hear, and my inner dialogue, the uh, sub-vocalized speech patterns. Um, they also influence it, so I have many panic attacks, and I have these strange inner feelings, and I get these feelings of like having pencils poked through my head, and through my eyes, and these headaches that just come and go, horrible nausea, and vomiting for days and days and days, and uh, it's terribly unpleasant. It's almost like uh, 
the evoked potentials, the, you know, when you sit there and you think about something and you begin to get motivated and you say, yes, I'm going to get up and do X, Y, Z, and they're recording that brainwave and they take it and play it back to you out of phase, you know, uh, 180 degrees so that they cancel each other out. I feel that way a lot. I feel like somebody pushed a button and hollowed me out. And I stand there for a moment going, oh God, what happened? Oh God, what happened? And uh, it's terribly unpleasant. Uh, what I call this technology is coercive technology. This is the technology of the 21st century that the military industrial complex, the global elite, the power structure, the people who are afraid of the masses finding out that they're actually being enslaved, uh, this is their holy grail, and um, I don't know, I lost track of my thinking. There's a, like a zero out button to this way to in, in, interrupt thoughts. Um, there's ways to make you feel as though you're, you're competent and conscious and making sense, but you're actually not. Uh, you realize later that you couldn't read the street signs and you, you couldn't read you know, it's disruptive technology. Basically, the military said, you know, we need a solution that's somewhere in between uh, killing people and talking to them, you know? Uh, talking to them doesn't always work. We're doing our best with the subliminal mind control programming through television. And so uh, they're developing coercive technology. And there's plenty of examples of it. Um, in fact, I was watching a video of, of the, the, one of the Iraq wars when uh, the U.S. sort of came over the, the, there were all these soldiers, Iraqi soldiers, in a deep in underground, like in a bunker, you know, and it was impenetrable, and, and for some reason the United States came over and, and, and all of a sudden all the soldiers came out and threw their weapons down and threw up their hands and, 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 they asked them later why did they do such a thing and they were they replied because Allah told them to come out and surrender and so they did uh, which sounds to me like coercive technology you know crowd control mind control uh, if you're able to talk into the mind of a group of people like a broadcast mechanism um, and these people don't realize that this technology exists they don't have never experienced this technology um, they're going to think it's magic or divinity or, you know, I mean, uh, basically all sophisticated, thoroughly advanced technology in the eyes of, of society that doesn't have this advanced technology looks like magic, or, or, you know. So um, that's one of the reasons I, I make these videos and I undergo the torment and torture uh, because they don't seem to like me making these videos, or maybe they do, I don't know. Um, I'm not dead yet. Um, I'm aging rapidly, deteriorating. I mean, I was, I looked, uh, you know, 20 years younger, about three years ago, uh, before they started the hardcore phase with the covert drugging and the hardcore microwaves. I mean, you know, the skin on my head has changed color. Of course, my hair's falling out. And, uh, you know, here I have like these burns. They used to burn us with uh, some kind of microwave weapon or particle beam weapon or something. And when we were in the hotel, we would get these zaps on our body. Bzz, bzz, bzz. It felt like, you know, shocks. Um, and sometimes we would sleep and we'd wake up with these big burns on our faces and, and you know, other times they would come in in the middle of the night and like dump bugs on us and wake up with burning, you know, the, it was actually the most painful thing I've ever experienced was this burning of my chest. I didn't know what it was for days. I was screaming. I was delirious. I was, it was horrible. I didn't know what it was. You know, the skin eventually turned all leathery and you know but putting water on it hurt more putting cream on it hurt more it was almost as if there was thousands of little bugs dug into my skin living in there going no if you put stuff on us we're gonna wiggle and hurt you and uh, it just was really a horrible experience um, 
you know, these are the kind of things we we underwent. It, it's, we were exposed to, to toxins, to nanotechnology, to genetically manipulated uh, creations. Um, we were exposed to a counterintelligence program that was designed basically to make us look insane. Uh, it was designed, you know, a lot of the things they did were designed to mimic schizophrenia or paranoid, delusional, uh, you know. Um, I have no idea the, the amount or the doses of, of hallucinogenic and hypnotic drugs they gave us, but I can tell you it was daily. Uh, and it went on for years. It actually took, you know, five or six years or longer, I don't know, but I can definitely say at least five or six years of being drugged with this drug before I understood that I was being drugged. And the symptoms of this drug or these toxins or whatever it is they're doing is it greatly increased anxiety, um, you know, fear reactions, uh, suspicion, um, heightened emotional ability, uh, situational um, enhancement, you know, it almost makes everything seem bigger or more important or, or more, you know, stronger emotionally. Uh, the it makes it difficult to think, to concentrate, to do higher, higher thinking, critical thinking. Um, it can make you, uh, you know, overwhelm you with with anxiety and everything coming at you and people and situations and you know moving and coming and going and uh, it's it's like a hallucinogen without the hallucinations basically. And if you add to that the, the, the mind control, which is uh, not just manipulation of your emotions, uh, manipulation of your endocrine system, because uh, your brain and your endocrine system basically control everything in your body, the organs and, you know, targeting different organs and uh, the, the technology that we were exposed to was unbelievable and the story of what happened to us is is incredible and if you had told me this story you know five years ago I might have wondered if you were crazy or on drugs so I understand the reaction when people say oh he's just a crazy homeless guy who found a camera and making a video or his head is a bag of cats I mean, come on guys take a look on Google take a moment Google the word targeted individual or the term gang stalking or MK Ultra mind control and you will see you, there's millions of results and it's not all just crazy people writing stuff on the bathroom wall. You know, if you start to actually look into their stories and, and see the faces of these people and understand what they've been through, you will see similarities and you will recognize this is a, a program, a global program that's being enacted. Um, if my theory is correct that, that chemtrails, Morgellons, nanotechnology, and embedded microchips for global mind control of the population is true, then, you know, we're at a whole new era here. This is a, a new world order like, like you wouldn't believe. And uh, a lot of people dismiss it as, as insane, you know. Why would they do that to us? I don't know. Look up in the sky at the hundreds of tons of aluminum and barium and titanium and 